Hello everyone, here's Dr. Liliana Garcia and today I'm going to talk about depression in adolescents. So I wanted to first say that this is one of the common issues that I see the most within young adults and adolescents and a lot of the parents have some confusion about what depression looks like in young adults and in adolescents so I want to clarify some things. The first one that I want to clarify is that during adolescent years, there's a lot of changes, and in terms of from a clinical perspective, depression might not look what you might think in terms of somebody laying and crying and not wanting to get out of bed necessarily. In many cases, it looks more like irritability and mood swings, so it's something to really be careful about not to think that it's solely about behavior because that's how it usually gets the attention that it, they're, they're being typical adolescents or that they're not behaving well. If it gets a little more extreme, then it could definitely be something more serious. So pay attention and look for help. So that's one thing. The other thing that I want to talk briefly is about different factors that can contribute for depression. There's obviously the genetic and family history, so that's really important. The other one is about all the different environments that the adolescents engage or are involved with. So I want to start with school. School in itself, I know I talked a little bit before how stressful it could be and all the different um, stressors that it can, it can kind of add into their lives. Not only the academic part of it, but also the social part of it. So it, it in itself, it's like a big, big I don't want to say monster, but it's like a big thing, and a lot of adults minimize it, but it's 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 really hard nowadays, and it's always been hard school for most people. So that's one thing that is really important to kind of take in consideration about how the stressors of figuring out what they want to do in their lives, trying to have good grades because they count toward their university or college and all those other stressors about the clothing, the peers and and bullying or name calling, etc, etc. So those are really important. Then we talk about the next one, which is one of the things that it's most common during adolescence is the whole peer relationships that is really important for them. And there are a lot of explanations about why in many cases they would um, give more attention or want to spend, spend more time with their friends than with their parents because it's part of their uh, becoming an independent person and all that. But at the same time, anything that happens with friends can impact them really, like, uh, it can definitely impact them a lot. So, and a lot of times we minimize because we go like, oh, you'll forget about it. High school is high school. But when they're in it, they feel that that's all that there is so just try to put yourself in their shoes and try to remember when you were in high school and they made fun of you or you fell or something how big of a deal it was for you it's the same for them so that's another one then we take in consideration family situations a lot of families go through a lot of different situations hardships financial difficulties separation losses etc etc so all those different changes and additions to the family, if there's any new kids or a new marriage or moving and all that, they definitely impact um, adolescents a lot. And we are very resilient as human species, but still it does impact when you have to go through the process of losing or adding new things. So just take in consideration whatever is going on in your family and know that even though you think that they are not getting impacted by it they do so a lot of parents go like well we're having issues in our relationship but they don't know about it most likely they do so all those things take in consideration there's also society um, in their community whatever is going on in their community in politics environment nowadays adolescents have a lot of access to a lot of information around the world so it's not only what happens in your town or in your country but also what happens around the world and a lot of them are really sad about all these um, struggles that a lot of people are having in different areas of the world. So all of that is also impacting them. 
And then a lot of the personal factors, their temperament, their personality traits, their kind of their self beliefs and all those kind of things. So all those things and there's more that are impacting your adolescent on a daily basis. So it's important to take that in consideration. Now what to do? I always like to give like some recommendations. So if you're noticing that your adolescent is having some mood swings, is usually there's a decrease in academic performance or in attendance or having difficulties waking up in the morning more than usual or falling asleep or lately not having any friends coming over or you're noticing that they're not talking to anyone any of those sudden changes just keep an eye on them and also not be so overbearing because they don't like that but try to just notice them from a distance it's really hard for me to talk about that balance but it's key and it's super important and seek help maybe start with yourself start looking information around asking the school if they have any support or any um, organizations that are providing any services because a lot of times they do or they have contact look around ask for other mom friends or fathers or any other professional that you know but look for help and if it's not for them necessarily but also for you and how to handle those situations the second one would be to encourage extracurricular activities I cannot talk that much about that in terms of what I mean is like I cannot uh, recommend that enough it's for me super important the extracurricular activities I believe they are amazing in terms of providing a lot of protective factors in terms of first of all they're engaged in something so they're not being bored in the community or in the after school and that's when usually a lot of the risk factors happen second it can provide them with a sense of increasing their self-confidence and their self-esteem they can also learn a lot of other values. They can have a mentor with the person that's teaching them, etc., etc. So that's really helpful. And that keeps them also focused that school is not all there is because it's not. That's the reality. It's not. Third one would be encourage them to do stuff, but also don't push them that much. Some parents are like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And adolescents usually don't like that because then they might shut the door even more because they it's like get close but not that close so that's why it's a really hard balance and you also have to know your adolescent because each one is different but kind of know that balance and maybe checking with them if you're being too pushy and ask them and if they say yes to step back then to step back but kind of have that balance don't don't kind of completely um, shut them down because a lot of times they want to shut you down and then parents go like why am I keep trying to talk with them because they don't want to talk with me just keep trying try in other ways keep looking for help keep looking for other suggestions because if you stop doing that then they're gonna feel even worse because now they're gonna feel like see my mom or my dad does not love me and that's how it usually goes the other one is to look for therapy Therapy is really helpful. It's not only for people that are having like a serious mental health issue. It's for anyone that's going through a, a specific life circumstances or situations and they can provide a lot of help, a lot of new coping strategies or just having someone to really listen to them and they can feel that they can trust someone. So look for therapy, definitely. The fifth one is improve the daily diet. A lot of my adolescents they, they were struggling with some more of those serious depression. Their diet was horrendous. Sometimes they wouldn't eat the whole day and then the only thing that they would have would be chips and junk food. And I mean, I'm not a medical doctor or any like that, but there are some information about what we eat and how it impacts our mood, like, like um, talking about sugar and all those kind of things. So just be really mindful about what they're eating and trying the whole family to improve it. The other one and the last one is to decrease stressors. Try to look around in your family. What are some of the stressors that are extra and are not needed? Maybe you're having too much of extra activities. So maybe kind of talking about decreasing and having some downtime, decreasing some other stressors like with homework, maybe looking for some help, some tutors, or going into a vacation, but trying to decrease stressors because this we are also teaching them about self-care which is so important and with nowadays with the technology and all the different demands with adults it's so hard for us to keep present and to even have a good life balance with work so 
start by them, start teaching them how to balance those things. And there's a moment that there's enough studying and they just have to trust whatever they did and, and they need to rest. So kind of having all that. Now that those are all the recommendations and I hope these are helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Alrighty, have a good one. Bye.